Imagine if the military had chosen the YF-23 in 1990 as part of the Advanced Tactical Fighter ATF program. What would these sixth-generation fighters have been like then? The irony is that despite the official loss to the Lockheed prototype, the ideas put forth by the Northrop team in the YF-23 not only survived, but ultimately won just with a 30-year delay. Stealth, thermal camouflage, advanced aerodynamics. All of these later became the norm rather than an experiment. And now we're seeing the return of many of these solutions in the most ambitious military aircraft of the 21st century. Today, we'll be telling you why the YF-23 was called a plane from the future and how it managed to get a second life in next-generation configurations. To understand exactly how Northrop was thinking ahead, you need to look at what the YF-23 was like. Designed in an era when digital design was just gaining momentum and aerodynamics was subject to tough budget compromises, the YF-23 stood out. Like an alien in the midst of traditional combat fighters, it was a menacingly quiet aircraft with a sleek veil and low thermal profile. Its A-to-air combat philosophy focus on stealth, speed, and survivability was reminiscent of another equally popular Northrop project, the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber. Introduced shortly before the ATF program's culmination in 1988, the YF-23, like its counterpart, the YF-22 from Lockheed, was intended to replace the McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle fighters, becoming an effective response to the advanced fighters of the not-yet-collapsed USSR, the Su-27 flanker, and MiG-29 fulcrum. Northrop was able to adapt quickly to the ATF program's increasing emphasis on stealth. As early as 1981, a small group of engineers working on the B-2 led by Robert Sandusky began actively generating ideas for a stealth fighter. Sandusky would later become Northrop ATF's chief engineer, and his colleague B-2 stealth engineer Yiping Lu would be hired as chief scientist in 1985. The result of the dynamic duo's efforts were three main design concepts, Agile Maneuverable Fighter, AMF, with two canted vertical tails and the best aerodynamic characteristics of all three variants, but with minimal stealth. The Ultra Stealth Fighter, USF, which emphasized maximum stealth by aligning the edges with just four blades of the radar cross-section, and is nicknamed the Christmas Tree for its wing configuration. And the High Stealth Fighter, HSF, which was a balance between stealth and maneuverability with its diamond-shaped wings, engine exhaust chutes, flush edges, and fully articulated V-shaped rudder vaders, also known as butterfly tails. First introduced in 1983, the HSF borrowed heavily from B-2 design to reduce its susceptibility to radar and infrared detection. Later, Leu's expertise in radar signatures and aerodynamics allowed the team to develop key design features for the future fighter, a distinctive nose shape with pronounced chine edges, later dubbed the platypus, and a canopy with their continuously curved Gaussian surfaces. By 1985, the HSF had evolved into an A-frame virtually identical to the future YF-23, striking the sweet spot between stealth and aerodynamics. The cockpit was positioned high near the nose of the aircraft for better visibility, and that same platypus significantly improved the high angle of attack characteristics. The YF-23 received a tricycle landing gear with a nose landing gear, two main landing gear, and a very impressive weapons bay located in the lower part of the fuselage between the nose and main landing gear. It had two turbofan engines, each in a separate nacelle duct to protect the engine's axial compressors from radar waves on either side of the fuselage's upper center line. The YF-23 had single expansion ramp nozzles, SEI, well like the B-2 Spirit. The exhaust from the engine passed through troughs in the aft deck line with heat-removing tiles to protect the exhaust from detection by infrared homing missiles. These tiles are made of a porous material called lamelloy and were cooled by evaporation from engine bleed air to dissipate heat. Unlike the YF-22, the YF-23 did not use thrust vectoring. The engines and aerodynamics of the Northrop prototype were designed to minimize drag at transonic and supersonic speeds, allowing it to cruise efficiently at speeds greater than Mach 1.5 without the use of afterburners. In testing... The YF-23 once again proved its outstanding performance by being quieter and faster than the YF-22, having a better supersonic cruising speed, having a lower radar signature, and overall being a more mature aircraft. However, the U.S. Air Force chose a YF-22 partly because of its greater maneuverability at low speeds. According to many experts, pilots, and historians, however, Personal preferences and logistical factors played a much larger role, so the Northrop project was frozen. 
This is where most stories of ambitious aircraft end, but not the YF-23. Since the mid-2010s, it's become clear that the appearance of the sixth-generation fighters of the Next Generation Air Dominance Program, NGAD, is turning toward solutions first tested in the YF-23, a tailless design, hidden recessed engines, wing and body integration, exotic air intake shapes, no external vertical surfaces, and a smooth thermal profile. All this is once again coming to the spotlight and is more relevant than ever. Particularly indicative is the F-47 concept recently presented by the developer of the American 6th generation fighter Boeing, whose silhouette almost directly quotes the YF-23. And this is not just our opinion, but that of Daryl B. Cummings, an engineer included in the list of stealth pioneers for his role in the development of the YF-23 stealth fighter. Speaking about what the F-47 will be like, Cummings admitted in an interview with Aviation Week that he saw Boeing's concept as a direct continuation of his work from 30 years ago. It definitely has elements of the YF-23. I'm not surprised at all. This is a direction things have been heading for a long time. According to him, when the YF-23 was being developed, engineers had to work on the edge. The flight control systems were not developed enough to ensure flight stability without vertical stabilizers and thermal protection of the nozzles required experiments, the results of which were unpredictable due to the imperfection of the technology level of that time. But today, those limitations have been lifted. High-speed processors, autonomous stabilization systems, and computer simulations of A-flow have made possible what was still just a guess at the height of the ATF program. Simply put, what was considered risky sophistication at the time is now seen as nothing less than engineering foresight. And while the NGAD configuration remains classified, available concepts and interviews with Boeing experts clearly indicate an aircraft devoid of vertical stabilizers with a smoothly integrated wing and body, hidden nozzles, and a geometrically clean silhouette, which in essence confidently continues a line once set by the YF-23. Some will say that this is just a stylistic coincidence. We would object stating that this is a very specific logic. In addition to aerodynamics, the NGAD concept also follows a philosophy of the YF-23 fighter, quickly penetrate the space, destroy the target, and exit the area without being detected by the enemy. With modern enemy radars and infrared sensors becoming increasingly sensitive, and the battle for air dominance moving into the realm of cybernetics, AI, and passive reconnaissance, stealth is no longer an option. It's a requirement for survival. And in the matter of stealth, the YF-23 was not just a step ahead, but from another era that had finally arrived. Another example of the legacy of Northrop's ideas is the B-21 Raider, a stealth strategic bomber that came from the same guy's pen. Although it's often considered a successor to the B-2 Spirit, the B-21 Raider actually borrowed more from the YF-23. Firstly, the layout of the engines. The Raider also has them deeply recessed into the hull. Their nozzles are completely hidden from enemy radars and their thermal signature is reduced to a minimum. The air intakes are closed from above so that the compressor blades are not visible to air defense. Such solutions were first tested on the YF-23. Daryl Cummings also noted in his interview that the B-21 not only retained the YF-23's heat signature reduction concept, but also significantly enhanced it. Second, the B-21 was designed from the ground up as a digital A-plane using virtual design, digital twins, and a modular architecture. An idea that also goes back to Northrop in the 1990s, where engineers were limited by the capabilities of the time, but whose bold ideas about stealth, easy to repair, upgrade, and scalable design are now a reality. And most importantly, the new U.S. strategic bomber embodied the same principle of stealth as a basis of the design and not an additional function laid down by who do you think? The YF-23, of course. And let's not forget about the joint efforts of U.S. allies Great Britain, Japan, and Italy to create their own sixth-generation fighter within the framework of the Global Combat Air Program, GCAP. Despite some differences in geopolitics, the objectives are virtually identical, to create a stealthy network integrated fighter that remains resilient even in the most intense combat conditions. Here again, we see a painfully familiar form factor, a tailless design, an emphasis on high-speed propulsion, advanced sensor systems, and flight controls optimized for design with minimal aerodynamic protrusions. GCAP renderings released over the past few years show the same smooth shapes, integrated air intakes, removal of the vertical tail, and a return to minimalist design.
All this forms a final, truly international recognition of the very architecture that 30 years ago seemed too radical to the U.S. command for serial production. What's especially noteworthy is that GCAP, like NGAD, is being developed from the start with the expectation of control using artificial intelligence, a high degree of automation of pilot tasks, a digital cockpit, and built-in situational analysis. Of course, in the days of the YF-23, Northrop did not have such broad capabilities, but the geometry of their prototype and the logic of the design already largely assumed the rejection of person is the main control lane. One of the myths that's long accompanied almost all discussions around the fate of the YF-23 was that it was less maneuverable. In fact, both prototypes had excellent flight characteristics. But Northrop consciously relied not on close combat and dogfight, but on the first shot from stealth. First look, first shot, first kill. The YF-23 had no intention of fighting the enemy. It wanted to destroy it before it even found it. Today, this vision is proven to be as close as possible to what's described as future combat, hypersonic delivery, multispectral reconnaissance, tactical synchronization with drone swarms, sensor fusion, and minimal exposure. NGAD, B-21, GCAP, for all their differences, think in the same categories as a YF-23. These are not platforms for duels. They are platforms for domination, leaving no charm for the enemy to resist. This is the main achievement of Northrop's YF-23. It didn't become production aircraft, but it did become a thinking model. It was not seen in the sky by the enemies, but its shadow is clearly visible in the best aircraft built so as never to be noticed. And what features of the new combat aircraft do you see a revival of the YF-23 ideas? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.